Three, two, one. Is the backup audio one? Three, yes. two, one. What's up, back. everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Study Hall here on UFS University. My name's Tam, and I'm joined by Michael, Travis, and Tyler. Back from the dead. What Study I Hall cut is? My hair. <laughs> what Study? Have you not been on since you cut nope. your hair? What Study Hall is for the unenrolled is we take a bunch of your guys' UFS topics as well as, as well as some of our own, and we sit down and we uh, discuss them for your amusement, entertainment, and knowledge. So with that said, a little bit of housekeeping, guys. I want to say we're like three subs away from uh, hitting four uh, four hundred on youtube so yeah go smash that red button yep smash that sub button ring the bell um so we'd absolutely love your support um if you have any more that you want to toss at us go out to patreon.com slash ufs university we're gonna be doing the cram session for all of uh you oh, yeah. thank you i can't remember um for the, the 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 angry brooklyn guy so um joey wheeler so um <laughs> we're uh talking ufs today uh, how's your guys weeks in ufs um it's going pretty well. Um, you know, my deck, my deck's running fine. Um, I think my side deck is is fine. Uh, I went to LWG and I tied with Travis, and then me and Travis won the tournament, and then Jeff got third place. So UFSU uh, stormed LWG. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, locals as usual. Whoa, um, the call out, <laughs> the call out. Yeah, it's been a pretty good week. Travis, For sure. Uh, oh, sorry, Michael, what are you playing? Uh, I'm playing Air Tornalu still. Still doing the cool fog blanket combos. Yeah. Course, that card's insane. Gets my life. Yeah, yeah that card's really, is. really good. <laughs> I'll yep. talk about that when it gets my turn. <laughs> yep. Um, Travis, uh, my week in UFS has been interesting to say the least. Okay. So, like Michael said, I took Evil Dejanet to the LWG locals, only tied with him. Got my other two wins against uh, Eugenia and Jetta two stacking Jetta one. Um. I am really on crunch time right now because Rockford is in eight, nine days, and I'm still figuring out what deck I'm going to be playing. I have a million different ideas. Right now, I have my mind set on three specific things. Um, Sophie Under Life, no. uh, Sophie Under Life, Jetta Under Death, <laughs> and uh, Dejanet Under Evil. That's uh, I have no opinion. <laughs> Dejanet under evil. But anyways, that's my week in UFS. Tyler. Sophie under life? Yeah. You just want to do throw Sophie? Yeah. Throwfy? Yeah. That's bad. Why? Because Templar is insane in her. Okay. Well, you can off symbol that. No, no you can't. But you definitely can't. But like you could just play uh Demon Realm Awakening instead. Also, the life gives you more life gain. Who cares? I I think life gain is insane in that character. Just play Gil. No. Right. right. Just play Gil. Gil gives speed and Just play heals. Ivy if you want life gain. Nah. 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 I think Gil's the way to go. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, Gil heals, heals and gives speed. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. draws and draws extra cards. Yeah. Tyler Clark. Yeah. Back so from I the dead. I was playing this real cool, this real okay Rimless deck. And Ooh. then I said, I hate it. I hate Fog Blanket. Why? Why? I didn't really say that. It, I... Fog blanket just wasn't doing the most. I I never really got to use utilize it, and also like the one time I did, it was against a character that burned me four million for existing. So I was like, well, I can burn two, and then he'll block my attack and kill me, or I can have him block three attacks and then kill me. <laughs> that was the decision I had to make. So and I was getting all of my like discard my. Moved from card pool, uh, advantage from my character cards, so like fog blanket like wasn't doing anything. But it gets big. So, the one thing I noticed about that deck was that you were playing a shit ton of uh base three damage attacks, and you weren't playing quest for the hero sword, which I think is a mistake if you're playing fog blanket. Michael's deck it's okay because he already runs a million other three diffs that are good. Well, I, and I play a Radiate. So. And that, too. Well, my the new deck that I'm playing is similar to, is closer to not relying on that. Until I realize that Consumption's a really bad card, and then I play uh, Taki's Ultra Air and go back to Fog Blanket. Tam, do you know what Quest for the Hero Sword does? Because you looked like you were pondering I'm, over there. So I am the terrible architect the worst deck builder in the game that built this 
Remilus deck. Yeah. That was getting their ace maneuvers up to 40 damage and killing Goro with it. But no, it's. The deck sucks. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He can I have whatever you want. I don't too. care. It's a very good deck. Um, it was in a draft, but mm-hmm. it was eventually cut just because I wanted to play um, other three diffs. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play other things, but I don't. It could easily be a card that gets added back in, depending. Like I probably, I probably don't need three God of Thunders, right? Because <laughs> I I think that card is insane when the cost on it isn't real. So characters or th- decks that are committed to just readying whatever they commit, like Remilus is. Yeah, I get that. Like it's just so free. I'll pitch this fog blanket with my fog blanket. I'll pick up this fog blanket. Yeah. Like, that's insane. Yeah, that is... That's good. That's good. That almost makes me want to play that card. Um, Picks up slide shots, too, in your deck. Yeah, that is... That's very cool. My week in UFS has been also interesting. I'm still stuck on Scorpion. Um, I had a slight glimmer of maybe playing Sophidia under order. Um, but I have just decided I didn't want to play that boring deck all day. The deck's good. The deck, holy shit, that deck is good. It's really annoying. But um, I just don't want to... Like, I was uh, on their on a half block of their their attack, I was committing four cards in their staging area, including yep. the character, mm-hmm. um, and taking three or whatever. Yep. Um, and then on your turn, you're just like, Ice Hammer. I'm not even playing that. Oh. Yeah, I'm playing Guilt, uh, uh, Guilt Seeker, Moonset, and Hyper Bomb. Yeah, very what, foundation. What staging control. area, punk? Yeah, <laughs> they just you deny them resources. Real easy to commit everything when there's five cards. Yeah, <laughs> real easy to commit everything when there's five cards. Yeah, and then you're just like, hey, two speed on this uh, Moonset. This on. Moonset. I'll tap these two Artifice Avarices for more speed, and then dumpster this for a thousand. Oh man, you didn't block it. That's a shame. Did you half block it? I'll commit the rest of your your board. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, are you playing her ultra rare, or were you? I'm not playing any of her cards. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. like I think all of her cards are bad. Mm. I think all of her cards are overcosted. I would like I'm playing. There's a there's a slight change that I want to make. There's a spot for two more cards. I'm playing. There's a, an old card called, uh, uh, Dragon Slayer. That says if this card's not fully blocked, commit your opponent's character. Oh yeah, it's yeah. got a one low block with a with breaker one. And so on aggro, it's a six mid for five that if they don't full block it, I'm going to tap their character. Mm -hmm. If they don't block it, they just take five. And if they half block it, they commit their character and then I commit three cards. Neat. Right. Um, And so like I was, so I originally made the deck for um, somebody out on discord um, and they were also going to go for the life throw thing. Like that was their plan. And I'm like, I think that's a bad plan because that's asking your cards to get blocked. That's asking. And Sophidia does not want her cards to be blocked. She does not want that. She wants to hit you for 6, 7, 8, 9, 12 damage. That's what she wants to do. But if you have block, I just get a bonus. It is a bonus. It is extra for you blocking. And when I block, I want to half block everything. And then get get DR it down just a smidge. Like, refusing like I was insane to that character. Nutty. Yeah. Um... Just like DR it down just just a smidge and just be like, oh, I'll half block, commit your whole board. Now you can't do anything. And then I'm going to sling all these attacks and like do real damage. The other deck I made is I made an 81 card deck, Zasamel, which my girlfriend believes that that's what she's going to be playing for Rockford. Hey. Um, the deck is very cool. I'm not 100% pot. I, I have to figure out like how I want to keep it actually as close to 80 as possible. I think that's a really good number for the character. But I have to figure out like. This card's not good, and I should bring this other card in, and blah, 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 blah. And, like, find commons. Like, we, the attack lineup's done. We don't have any commons or uncommons. Like, telekinetic masteries are in different decks and mm. shit like that. <laughs> like, yeah. But the the deck is really cool, and it if, it... if you don't put pressure on it by turn three, you're probably going to lose. Because Spider Suplex is not a fair card. Also, like, the big, the big ring that I put it together was Judgment Day. Um, oh, yeah. Judgment yeah. Day is sick in that character. Yeah. Um, Judgment Day is a new champ card that's that get, lets you loop a singular attack as long as it goes to momentum. And so you just play Spider Suplex, and I'll gain my three life, minus five speed, plus five damage, hit you for six, it'll go. I'll play Judgment Day, pick up my Spider Suplex, it'll move. On and there. you also gain a vitality from Judgment Day. Right, so I'll 
pay gain four. We've got Guardian Slasher in the deck at a one of, but like we could we could play more of it in the sideboard and just like end your turn. I'll play this eleven damage throw, not including whatever. You, you can also just pick up the slasher with Judgment Day as well. Right. Um, oh, I'll pick it up, gain one. Oh, turns over again. And it's just it's this constant pressure of. So the re- I, I like made the deck because you remember Elemental Dragons, right? I named the deck E Dragons because like. I get to play with these five cards, and I get to play with any attack in my discard pile on your turn. That's cool. Yeah. And so, like, as long as as long as you are like, what out of my discard pile is relevant right now? This one. Yeah. It's I just like a that. death toolbox reversal deck. Anyways, um, we're ten minutes into the podcast. This has been a fun chat. I want to talk about uh, speaking of fog blanket, is stun okay again? There was a while that stun decks, uh, i.e., coffee samba, were running the format to the point where like coffee samba missile launcher all of these big stun cards people were like especially like as soon as bebop dropped holy shit stuns broken do you guys still feel that stun is as powerful as it as it once was uh not like playing for like a super long time i think it's like been put in check now with the yeah. uh, sense of morals uh Azure nightmare and then the uh burning with revenge yeah, yeah. Burning Revenge does have an ability on it, doesn't it? Yeah. I keep forgetting that's not just a plus two damage on that cracker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in general, they have just printed a lot more stun hate. So like, um, Gills two diff that says order response remove after they commit or blow up one of your foundations. You commit one of their foundations. Um, Conduit of United Essence. Yeah. Um, also, Wandering Pirate is still stun hate. Oh, you stunned my wandering pirate. Sick already. This other thing, and, and you have Kaluga to bounce to make them add a foundation add it, to their yeah. card pool. Yeah. After what they stun you. What I'm saying is, is like, so we've set a bunch of cards that cover a bunch of a bunch of things. Uh, I think I got very lucky against you by pulling like a double Azure Nightmare. Sure. So every time that you played a stun two, I burned you for four, and then blocked with a, uh, a flame aura, yeah. burned you for a fifth one. There's like, there's a a sixth of your life mm-hmm. and it's it's you've played a singular ability okay. um i i actually think that stun is still super good to the point where like i think stun is only good after they've committed a couple cards like yeah. it's not possible to break walls anymore like that's very very hard well is there even walls to break yes okay there are definitely For, wall decks that exist <laughs> um i made your deck as a wall deck yeah. your deck is not an aggressive deck your deck is supposed to just wall up, block everything until I two or five attacks and go, oh, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. Which is why, like, there's a, a now I wanted the main board for Shaolin Fighter, which just says commit. This deck gets done too. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so you give your fog blanket stun four and then you stun it and then you ready your you add a character in and then ready it again on the next card. It gets another yeah. stun too. Yeah. So, like, with a singular use of a card and double fog blanket, you stun eight things. That's breaking walls. Yeah, that's breaking walls. Same thing yeah. with like like there's so many times that versus a wall deck, you they build one pass as a six hander and you're like, Oh, well coffee sample is gonna stun you seven now. Like that's that breaks walls. But yeah. like stun one, stun twos, even missile launchers stun is it's I mean it's only stun five. Yeah. But there's a point in the wall game where um I wanna say Phil Birch said this, uh deadlock doesn't matter past fifteen. I think it matters less. I don't think it doesn't matter. Well, it, it really depends on the deadlock abilities, right? Yeah. And so for my new kids, deadlock is when you have, uh, when your opponent has eleven or more foundations, your deadlock abilities may then be activated. Because I will never even touch deadlock if I see a champion of combat on the other side of the board ever. I want you to close your eyes and think: When was the last time you saw a champion of combat? The card's still very good. When was when was the last time you saw a champion? Of combat? Uh, back. You said close your eyes, Travis. Close okay. your eyes, Travis. So when LK was very good. So months ago. Yeah. Like six, seven months ago. So like back back at nationals. So like the thing is, the card's mm-hmm. still insane, mm-hmm. but people aren't playing it for some reason. It literally says, "I will punish you." For using this game mechanic called blocking by giving my attack stats. Like, at the point where you're committing this card for 2-2, that's very good. E commit 2-2 is very good. And that's after they've only blocked two attacks. And it has some of arguably the best symbols in the game right now. Fire, death, water? Yeah. Hmm. 
arguably the best wow. symbols in the game. Yeah. Two of those symbols are pretty good. Which one's not? I mean, I don't know. No offense to fire, but Samba. Well, I mean, missile launcher. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, think, I think there are. There's. If a you're r- using those cards, then you could just say Earth too. You could. I mean, but Champion of Combat doesn't have Earth. Well, so proud of but me. I mean, you know, Death and Water are just better than Fire. Hmm. I think Death's the weakest, actually. I don't, don't think so at all. I think Death's insane right now. Yeah. I think Fire and Water have moved past it. Talk it out. I like what this I is doing. It, I still uh, think that this is a, a Death Ran format. I don't think there's a lot of people playing Death. But I still think that Death has the best answers, and ar- arguably, besides like close to evil, it has like the best foundation lineup. Yeah, close to evil has the best foundation lineup. We're getting to such a symbol talk. Like, you guys want to talk about symbols today? I mean, that's fine. Like, we, we can. We can. Let's do that. Keep, let's let's jump back on. Let's jump back on. Uh, is stun okay? So I think like the biggest thing when it comes to stun. I wish I had a pen. The biggest thing when it comes to stun is that like, I think stun is only super applicable when they've committed stuff already yeah right it's they've a got, punishing tool they've got three foundations including one sense of morals and i stunned to you and they already a singular foundation back that's fine i yeah. still committed one right yeah. as long as like the next attack i get to keep committing foundations yeah over stun is is playable which is like why i'm digging this sophidia deck so much but at the same time i've played against a a sense of morals deck um or a deck that ran sense of morals which is why my deck is so sick, because of all the foundation hate. I'm going to sit and put that sense of morals back in your hand, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> sick non-block. Um, but I, I was running cards that just stopped their stun hate. Like, I, I think I think, I think think stun is good. I still think stun is very good. Yeah. But I'm not positive that it is as... St- play this card, stun two. Play this card, stun five. Play this card, punch duty, punch duty, punch yeah, duty, double. It, it's, def- like, <laughs> it's definitely not... It's not jet format. Mad Pro. It's not that anymore. Yeah, it's not. Now, do I th- still think that the T-Sphere Missile Launcher decks, the T-Sphere Coffee Samba decks are insane? Te- I I do still think they are. Technical Sphere for my new kids. Yep. It's T-Sphere. Yep. I still think those decks are insane. Like, I think those decks are very coin flip. I think I think those decks either feel like they do nothing or they do... they Or they... They they either say I do nothing or you do nothing, and that's how just that's how it feels, yeah. and like, that's that's how fire should be. It yeah. either it either burns really hot or it smolders. Yeah, like I would. You're so smart, Daniel. Thank you. Thank I you. would unironically <laughs> be playing my hundred card Ken list if we had the sambas for this PTC. Man, if we had moon sets, you might have had the sambas. I was this close to switching to Sophia last night. Holy shit, that deck feels so good. You're crazy. You should. Do <laughs> you, it. Just, you just want the sambas. Do it. What a good teammate. <laughs> Um, any last minute thoughts on, on stun? Obviously, like, if you're not playing stun hate, play it. Yeah. 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 There's so much good stun hate that you can be playing under almost every symbol. Can I, can I make a distinction? Yeah. And we talk about that. What's the difference between stun hate and stun deterrence? Do you believe there's a thing? Uh, so like a stun deterrent would be sense morals and like stun hate would be a jure nightmare. Stun hate, it? stun hate would be sense of morals because it says you don't do that, and then stun deterrent would be uh, like wandering uh, pirate. I think I, I actually think azure nightmare would be a deterrent because right. it right, says right, right. You'll get burned. you don't want to stun me or you'll take damage. It is a cold war of man. I I shouldn't stun him. Yeah. I am I am okay passing the stun ability. Yeah, that is fun. As opposed to sense of morals, where it's like, oh, you stunned me. You didn't though. Yeah. Like so, uh, manifestation, I'd say is stun deterrent. Yep. Yeah. If you stun me, you're gonna commit a card too, yep. idiot. <laughs> so I kind of feel like sense of morals is only stun hate if a it's not a whole ton of stun, or b they're readying a very specific card. And that is that it. So sense of morals follows it. My phone is blown the fuck up. Holy shit. I just got seven messages nice. like right now. Um, Jeez, yeah. Brag about it. <laughs> it's my family. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I can totally see that. Like if they they stun like a telekinetic mastery, that's gonna feel really bad, right? Um, Maybe, they stun. Yeah. Uh, well, like I'll check a five ready TK. <laughs> yeah. Reduce it by two. All sure, right. You, yeah. If I'll tap my TK, check ready my TK. Reduce yep. it by two. Yeah. Yep. Um. 
but or something along the lines of like a refusing let go. That would be that would then that would then make it from uh, stun hate into stun deterrent of he has a refusing to let go. I'm not allowed to play that card, which is yeah. why sense of morals is so good. Yeah, normally it's stun hate unless they've got a really good piece that can be stunned and then it's deterrent. Yep. Yeah. Like I would say, uh, wandering wandering pirate and uh, burning with revenge stun hate. Yeah. I you don't you don't your stun didn't work. It yeah. negated without negating. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's just like an interesting difference when it comes to the stun keyword because there's sometimes like the stun deterrent just doesn't work yeah. I'll, i'm gonna kill you through your burn the the burn actually did not stop the stun at all yeah me committing a foundation did not stop anything i, I, I just still killed you i, mean, I don't I'll care if you to just tap did two. right i don't care if you just did four damage to me you have to now discard two cards if you want to do it anymore and i'm correct. gonna stun the rest of your board correct and that is that's the difference between deterrence and hate yeah hates ready to back up i think there's a lot more hate than deterrence than just because, like, I mean, I, I, that are like relevant currently. Go on, right? So, like, Wandering Pirate, Manifestation, Calyuga, uh, Burning with Revenge. I don't think Calyuga's stun hate. I, I think, think that's deterrent, yeah. right? I think okay. both that and Manifestation are deterrents because it says don't do this or okay, something okay. negative is going to happen to you. As opposed, as opposed to like Wandering Pirate says you stunned one, but you didn't. It just you stunned this card, and I got to ready this card. Like okay. you didn't, you didn't stun me. I just so got to like, swip, swatch, swap, sw- switch, swap resources. Swap, another way we swap, can swap. look at it is like, sorry to interrupt, but uh, yeah. another way we can look at it is a stun deterrent negatively affects your opponent, whereas stun hate helps you most of the time. I feel like we don't really have any stun hate that negatively affects your opponent. I guess by proxy. Getting a plus on your end is negatively affecting your opponent, but semantics. if there was a if there was a card that said like uh, if this card is committed due to your opponent's effect, draw a card or something like that, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, or like that would be, or like ready, uh, ready this card, draw a card or or something like that. That'd be like too good, but like yeah, it's it's so the difference we were saying the difference between hate is it has to ready itself. Or get, put yourself, give you that plus one to your check later. Mm-hmm. Oh, so like, yeah, stun yeah. hate would be if this is, uh, uh, if this is committed, you get plus one to your next check. Yeah, that'd be like another instance of stun hate. Yeah, uh, but if it was like it did that and your opponent discarded a card or some shit. Yeah, that'd be insane. Holy that, shit! Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think stun's fine where it's at right now. I actually agree. I, think I do. Too many checks and balances for it. And then like, there's some cards that like don't do enough stun. Like, there's probably like at least like five or six cards commons in Soul Calibur. They're like stun one. Yeah, totally. And I think so. stun one should definitely exist on a lot of stuff. It, it like it gets through because that's that's when we talk about stun. It's like plus one speed for the rest of the turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as they don't have that stun hate, right? Yep. So with that. Uh-